Good afternoon. I would like to tell you about an application that ACAPS is launching today together with the Internews Center for Innovation. This presentation is actually really about sense making. It's about how do we make sure that all the data we collect becomes useful for the humanitarian organization responding to crisis. And I, that's a difficult thing to do. And so I would like to start with telling you about a couple of operational experiences which weren't very positive for us, specifically the Haiti earthquake and the Pakistan floods in 2010. In both of those operations, we were involved in large-scale, multi-agency, multi-sector assessments, and neither of these exercises had the impact that they should have had or could have had. Why is that? Fundamentally because both exercises were driven primarily by data collection. That's what set the, the pace of them. And we've just heard a lot of uh, presentations about what we can do with data today, collecting it. So why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem because if you look at how much of the data we actually used in the final report, in the case of Haiti, it was a third of the data. In the case of Pakistan, it was only 15%. If you calculate the man hours that we spent getting that data, that's hours we can't afford to lose in the first days of a disaster. So we sat down and we tried to figure out what do we do? And we didn't go looking for a very complicated solution about how we could process a lot of data. We started out by the things we keep on banging our head into. One, disasters are defined by never being what we expect them to be. We never get from a disaster what we think we'll get. What are the implications for the sort of data you collect when you have scarce resources? Secondly, decisions are made when they're made, not when we want them to be made. You know, we can't determine when big decisions are made, so we have to tailor our approaches to, the, the, to that rhythm. Thirdly, we will always have massive information gaps. No, then there will be known unknowns, there will be even more unknown unknowns. How can we, in a situation like that, develop better approaches? It boils down to getting better at responding to the needs of people affected by disaster. That is what this is all about. And the key to unlocking that, in our opinion, is an approach which is analysis-driven and supported by data, not the other way around. And so the three principles we came up with to, to crystallize that was, one, know what you need to know. It sounds so obvious, but do we really know what we need to know? Think about that. Secondly, make sense, not data. If you don't know what you're going to use it for, why are you collecting it? It's the second thing. And thirdly, don't be precisely wrong. Be approximately right. Hmm? When you're in a fast-moving situation with massive ma data gaps, be very clear on having the right level of zoom that you, you have a robust analysis which essentially answers three questions. What is the geographical area affected and how many people are there? Who are the most vulnerable groups and how have they been affected differently by this disaster? And thirdly, what is the nature of their needs? Which sectors do we need to focus on? So together with Internews, we came up with the Global Emergency Overview, which is a new application you can, you can download from today in the, the Play Store. And basically, there are three layers in the GEO. The first layer is a global severity ranking, an overview in four very broad categories of the ongoing disasters in the world, with a short narrative, as you see on the left of the screen, giving you the highlights of what's up in the world this week. It's updated on a weekly basis. Secondly, a short country narrative for each country included in the GEO. And you may not be able to read this in 15 seconds, but you can read it in a minute. And if you do, you will have a basic understanding of what's up in Ethiopia right now. And if you then combine that with the third and deeper layer that we have, which is called the disaster needs analysis, which is basically a 20-page document going through uh, sectoral analysis, key priorities, looking at information gaps, uh, then you get a picture which will allow you to discriminate better between the different types of needs we see in the field, and that's really what this is all about. The last thing I would like to say is that 
we know you know it's difficult, and we want to work with you. So please, if you're interested by what you've just heard, come see us. We're at the tech fair. You can have a look at the geo and understand more what it's about. And that was it. Thank you very much.